answers and answer some questions. Those of you who are out in the internet land, our email address, as you know, is questions at bfdbc.org. Questions at bfdbc.org or 856-261-9018. Give us a call or give us an email. Uh, Dr. Bush has written many books, 15, but he's given wow. nine of them here. This one, America's Scourge and Horse, is one. And you ask questions about that, he's going to tell us a little bit, maybe. And that evolution of fact, fraud, or faith, he's got that book. And they're up there in the, in the other, other room. AIDS, the Silent Killer, uh, is that a right winger? Is another book that he's given up. And the boys, a big book of humor, just that one. And Christian Resistance, that's another one. And then programs. Puritans and Patriots, that's the other one there, and then uh, your health, how to feel better, look younger, and so on. And then also one more, uh, liberalism, a world of sand. So these are some of the topics. Many other books, these are only nine out of 15. So we'll turn it over to Dr. Boyce and see if you've got the question. You may want to say something to the topics. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Wade. And again, it's a doctor will be back with you all and welcome any new book here today. And um, uh, if, if you can see my walk after, it's about the books. And, and we also have three uh, e books that you can put on your book, either your Kindle or even on your computer. And uh, one on evolution, the one on the uh, uh, God haters, and uh, Islam as the Trojan Horse, and Christian Resistance. Those three are uh, available on Amazon.com or through us. You can see my wife. If it's any of those. Uh, this is a Q&A session, and uh, this is common, of course, after a lecture or a debate. And uh, I think it's very good in, in, in some of our services, too. We don't know nothing of it, maybe in our church services. Um, let me just throw out very quickly some possibilities, and then we'll go from there. And just wing it, as they say. Uh, we can talk about issues. Uh, various issues that are prevalent today, same-sex marriage, abortion, death, penalty, uh, minimum wage, uh, immigration, etc. Those are very, very hot topics. Uh, or Islam is a possibility. Politics, um, political parties, whatever. Um, church and churches and pastors in politics. Uh, Fundamentalism, evolution, health, general health, personal health, the family life, uh, new atheism. And uh, maybe some of the talk shows. I've been on the Jets for four times, and ZWPL, and the Crossfire, and CBS Morning News, ABC Nightly News, uh, numerous times on TV and Twitter and broadcasting, and uh, all kinds of others. I, I don't know a lot of them anyway. Uh, I, I won't do the Spanish show anymore. I decided to uh, boycott him because he comes from some bad. But anyway. Um, those are some of the uh, possibilities, or maybe not. What do you think? So, the first question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, you said you've been on the Jim Springer show. Right. Can I ask for why? I'm um, sure. Uh, uh, you know, I know because I, I watch it sometimes and I know what type of people he has on that show. That's what you talked about a long time ago? Yes, a few years ago. That's why I said I don't do it anymore. Yeah, I would have been a question. So, what he has was why I would be on Jerry Springer. Yeah, yeah. And the fact is, I reach many millions of people in, in just an hour's time. The problem is, of course, there is not live and uh, so they can. And, and uh, but uh, every time I do, without exception, I did the show. It was I had to do with homosexuality or AIDS, and uh, so uh, as long as they, I can say what I want to say, the problem is, of course, is that they can edit out some of the things I say. Uh, but this is a good question: Why should I be associated with it? Well, I don't anymore. But I was with him the first time in Cincinnati. He was out of Cincinnati, and most people don't even know that's where he started. And in fact, furthermore. Uh, he got in trouble. He used to be mayor of Cincinnati. I know that. And um, he also visited a prostitute and gave her a check. That's not too smart. And uh, that's, that's before he became famous. And then he uh, took off. And then I started doing the show in uh, way down in Chicago. That's what you So anyway, uh, I won't do the story anymore. Anyway, that's the reason I uh, look at the game. I get an opportunity. I like to be able to run it home. I can't remember where I'm going to head. It was fast. And I said, hey, I'm going to get a car. I'm afraid. Because the sun is 
That dog, he got in trouble. That's why he's not married anymore. Well, he didn't want to be, but they, he put a lot of, he got a lot of grief with, you know, doing that show. Oh, yeah, well, you know, he was, he, frankly, I don't want to spend much time on him, that's yeah. for sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, it gave me an opportunity to, to let my position be known on homosexuality or on AIDS or whatever. And uh, at the end of every show I did, I did four. At the end of every show, he came over at the end of the show, sat down beside me, sat on the, on the end table or really the table on a chair, and said, well, Dr. Boyce does a good show. It's your first show to be with. But yet, during the time, he, he what he called Jerry's Minute. I don't know if he still does it or not. But yeah, he does. He, he, he really basically says anybody who believes what this guy believes is nuts. That's basically his, his position. That's true. And, and he didn't he did say it like that. But, but, go ahead. but that's that's the way he uh, reacted to every time I was on. But he was very friendly, all show. But anyway, let's go uh, to another question. Other questions? Yes. yes. Right there. Yeah, Bill. Uh, it uh, seems that um, um, anytime somebody speaks uh, that they're not in favor of homosexuality or that they are against abortion, they are called homophobes or they are against women's rights. <laughs> Now, my position, uh, for example, I am against homosexuality, but I'm not in favor of laws that prohibit it. I think the government should butt out of people's affairs. But uh, I won't accept homosexuality. Uh, I can't accept that at all. But because I can't accept that, I am automatically called homophobic. Yes. Now, this is a tactic we've been using for quite a few years now. And it seems like a lot of people who are against uh, homosexuality are not speaking out for their own rights. I have a right to be against homosexuality. So what's your question? That's, right. That's, right. Right. That's exactly right. What's your question? Uh, why are people being so quiet? Well, that's, 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 that's a great question. The question has to do with homosexuality. And uh, I, uh, I think we, I know we've been intimidated. Many people have been intimidated. Yeah. They wrote a book uh, back maybe 20, 25 years ago titled the band played on, written by homosexual, and he gave the specific outline as to what should be done, the protocol, the, the plan, and they, he said to present yourself as a victim. This is what he told homosexual, and to and, and uh, be outspoken and make accusations. That's exactly what they've done, and frankly, they've done an incredible job uh, in the last 25 years. I, I had a bill in the legislature in Indiana to to make. Uh, uh, homosexuality illegal, and you said you don't especially believe that. But see, I have a reason for it. Uh, but if you have a law, it gives the police officers something to deal with, to, to use. For instance, in Indianapolis, uh, that homosexual every night took over one of, the, one of the parks right near the church of Pastor Pinnemeyer, and, uh, and they did the cruising, and they found it numerous times in, in the bushes and things like this in our Illinois Park in Indianapolis. So if we had a law against homosexuality, the cops could have used that. No cruising, no, no sex in public restroom, etc. So anyway, I, I think we do need some laws. I'm not interested in having a, uh, a camera in every bedroom. But, uh, I, and also, I don't want to go into this, I wrote a column about it. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, the homosexual, who uh, uh, about 21, 22 boys, he, he uh, abducted them, he uh, Raped them, he and then uh, he killed them, and he ate some of their body. Remember Jeff? Yes. Uh, and, and one nun said, "Well, he's just a he's just a misunderstood boy." <laughs> but anyway, they when one boy was escaped, fourteen year old boy running through the streets and bleeding and naked, and uh, uh, and he went out and Jeff was out chasing him, and the cops came and caught the boy, and and the cops thought it was just a, a lover's quarrel. And, he, and there was no law against homosexuality in Wisconsin. And so, uh, anyway, he sent the boy back with Jeffrey Dahmer. And the boy was, was killed, mutilated. Part of his body was eaten in the next couple of days. So that's just, I'm saying that we need to have a law, uh, not an intrusive thing on, in bedrooms, things like that, but uh, a law that we can force homosexuality. Anyway, that's enough on that. But I'm totally against same-sex marriage. And if three years ago somebody would tell me, that one day we'll be seriously considering it. I'd have laughed at it. But here we are. It's coming. And uh, I'm not going. And uh, and it'll, it'll be against the law to to, to say that homosexual, that same-sex marriage is wrong. So right now in Canada, you can go to jail if you say 
the homosexuality problem. You say that Islam was wrong. Uh, you go to jail. I'm amazed that we don't have 20 or 30 Baptist preachers in jail in Canada right now. But anyway, I'm not going to go quite. Yeah. If you say Christianity is wrong in Canada, will you go to jail for that? Nothing I know of, no. No. Anybody else? Well, we got a question from uh, Illinois, Charles Christian. Charles, call again. We'll take your questions on the air. Go ahead. <clears throat> Other people want to call on the internet, 856 261 9018, or questions at vfdbc.org. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, Dan. So, um, in your research, <clears throat> how have you noticed the uh, revision of, of history, basically colonial history, changing both in the secular world and now also the religious world? Well, of course, they've made a lot of, uh, you know, they've made, they've made uh, I mentioned to you that I start my book on getting with Columbus, and they've made him they've come kind of over. And uh, as if uh, it, He said there was a such thing as a modern Muslim. There are, yes, I've met many of them, but they're not cor what I call Quranic Muslims. Anybody who goes to the, goes to the mosque every week and believes every word of the Quran is watching. He's thinking he's dangerous. But there are many, many people who moved to America. They've acclimated. They wear blue jeans and they eat pizzas and they don't go to the mosque very often and they're just Muslims in name only or background or culture. So people are wrong who say that every Muslim is a terrorist. That's not true. Every Quranic Muslim has to be a terrorist or he's not a good Muslim. Now that's very clear in the Quran. I got a, I have a Quran that's published in Saudi Arabia, Medina, and you can't get any more official than that. And they make it very clear about all these issues, even the footnotes. Now see that you can have some disagreement about what the Quran actually means, but when their scholars explain what they mean in the footnotes, there's no argument. They talk about jihad. That jihad is a it's simply a struggle that you have with uh, your temper or your, or your passions or your uh, desire to eat and things. Well, that can mean that, but it means far more than that. And jihad means struggle in uh, the battle for Islam. And every Muslim, every true Muslim must help make the nation in which he lives a Muslim nation. Not he's not a true Muslim. Now, that's a statement right from the footnotes of the Quran. Of the, uh, Quran. I think it was bad news. I think it's bad news, even apart from terrorism. And I'm thoroughly convinced that we have massive numbers of, of uh, 
of cells right here in America right to this day. And, uh, but even apart from that, we've got major problems with just Islam itself, apart from the terror. Anybody else? Joe. Now I have another question because it's already worked out. Islam. Do you see or have you heard America becoming, well, I don't know, but it would become totally Islamic because in every country you have a certain amount of true Christians, no matter how few they may be, and how low the percentage may be. But do you see, or have you heard prediction wise that? You know, like the Muslimization of America. I mean, we you know it's happening slowly, surely. There are these terror cells that are, you know, a lot of times hidden. A lot of people don't know about or where they are and everything. And do you know about the statistics? Well, that's not specific. I deal with my book. I don't have them off the top of my head. But however, there's no question that the experts can tell you about the year that England will no longer be England. Yeah. France will no longer be France. Spain will only be Spain, and Italy will no longer be Italy. It's simply because of the, in, in the uh, easy immigration, and also because of the massive number of babies born. They know for sure. Can you imagine? England won't be England. It'll be named England, but it won't be England. Right now, there are massive, massive areas in France, and in Paris, and in London, and in other cities in Europe, where you don't dare go if you're not a Muslim, where they're in total control, where Sharia, is, is practiced, and I think it's where we're headed in America. We don't win, but we know it, and the experts already tell us. I mean, in the few years, and the prisons are already taken over. Prisons in America, universities, that's the biggest uh, uh, recruiting ground here, the universities, and uh, in the prisons. No, it's very interesting, I want to interject that um, my husband and I watched a video, it was a Christian conservative video the, the other night, and it showed Angela Merkel and uh, Sarkozy and all, like the presidents, funded of all these like, countries and all, yeah. saying that multiculturalism does not work and has not worked. It's been a failure in their countries. However, we're still headed there via Muslimization and all this other oh, stuff. Yeah. We're headed to the totally wrong direction where people are killing Christians and Jews and hate them over there. Just that's what yeah. you know, Islam's all about. And all. So yes. Some people think it's by 2030 we got more Muslims than take over. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry. But that's also. Being Christians and having our Bible in hand, we know that a one world religion is a great to expound and grow that nation. Yes. So it's not a, a shock. No, it should be. It's a hard right. reality, but it's not a shock. But we're here. I mean, we, if we've been hearing about it and talking about it and preaching about it for years, and now it's staring us in the face. We, we are about to see, uh, well, we're seeing massive changes in our government, massive changes in the attitudes of people. So to think that, that it's amazing. It, that uh, it's like same sex marriage and things like this. It's incredible that it's not just the law, but society is changing. I, every now and then I'll speak in a, in a, in a usually in a Sunday school class, adult Sunday school class or a mixed class, and I'll, I'll, I'll deal with such a homosexuality. I only do that if the pastor asks me to. But, uh, and I, it's not, I don't say it's common, but every, every now and then I see a young person, by a young person, I mean somebody under 30, sitting out there going, shaking their head. Now they don't make it, I won't permit it, of course, anybody makes it <coughs> ruckus and fuss, but they just sit there and they shake their head saying, I don't agree with you, I don't agree with you. And that's, where, and that's in Bible preaching churches. And I have asked pastors, I said, Pastor, I thought maybe he was a visitor. Yeah. I'd say, would you see that thought? I, I, I assume he's a bit, oh no, no, he's been in the church for years. Astounded. I'd say the commonality of my workplace is that I've been in, under pastor weight over the several, several years coming and going. <coughs> Um, just the expansion and the acceptance of homosexuality yes. in our workplace, and in the same manner you were just talking, the tolerance issue, you can't speak against it, you'll lose your job. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's America. And even if you're just speaking your opinion, you're not like condemning, you're not, yeah. like, I don't I hate to, I, I don't hate them. Yes, but right. It's like any not. other sin, but to be able to speak out, then you're considered a hater because yes, you you're are. speaking your opinion based on your beliefs. Well, now, first of all, there are many, many Muslims trusting Christ. That's happened all over the world. Mm -hmm. In fact, some are saying it's even a phenomenon that so many have tr are trusted. And remember now, that they, it's one thing for somebody here in America to, but when a Muslim does it, that's, that's something else. They cut off, so many times it's a matter of their life and death. And uh, so God's working, and, and, and many of these people are risking their lives, you know, to tell them Christ is the answer. Uh, homosexuality, astounding. Another, it's another matter altogether, and we should not, well, of course we love them. They need Christ like anybody else. Some say people say, well, really, there's no difference in this sin and that sin and the other sin. That's, that's kind of dumb because there are a lot of different sin. I've had people say, well, you might as well think about it until I'm finished to commit it. That's dumb. That's super dumb. 
I mean, it's bad to think about it. I mean, it becomes adultery. But when you go out and you do it, it tears up families and destroys a church. You know, of course, there's a big, big difference of sin. But, uh, uh, we, of course, we tell them the message. We love them. Christ is the answer. Their lives can be transformed. Families can be transformed. Uh, and in obedience to the scripture. Anybody else? <coughs> Yes, yeah, so there's questions from there. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Uh, Pastor Sonny Warm, greetings to you and your all your VFP church family there at Commons with for those watching by internet. We want to thank Dr. Boys for his message this morning with a tremendous blessing to our hearts. Our thanks also to Mrs. Boys for a wonderful message ministry and song. Uh, Vicki Carl McGill. Oh, that's good, that's fine. Did you have a question? Uh, let's see question. Okay, let me see if question. Hello, hello, Hello. <laughs> yes. Speak upon. 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 Speak um, I, I don't. Uh, that's that's highly, highly controversial about the connection with the Antichrist. Some say that our president is, is the Antichrist. Uh, I think it's really reaching, and, and uh, it's, we can have a disagreement. And in fact, we disagree with very, we disagree very definitely with him and the others, the Republicans or Democrats. But without making six, I, I, I can't do that. Nobody else can. First of all, the Antichrist, remember, is is going to be perceived as being. Uh, Christian in Christ and, and uh, for the Jews, and uh, you sure don't see that with, with Islam at all. Um, as far as Roman comparison, Roman Catholicism and and, uh, and Islam, it's uh, they both would be uh, totalitarian, whereas the Pope, the Pope would be the number one uh, spokesman for the Roman Catholics. Um, the, the Muslims don't have that. But they have they have a great many local popes all over the all over the world. Uh, okay, uh, any, any other question? Uh, that's we're in deep waters when we're talking about the uh, the Antichrist and, all, and uh, Islam. Let me ask you this, Dr. Boyce. What is your position in regard to the United States Constitution and the many, many, many uh, differences and changes and obliterations of that by our present uh, situation and rulers in the country? That's quite a question. <laughs> I mean, Obama and all is true. I mean, right. Article 1, Article 2, 5, 14. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't believe it. I believe I'm, in a, I believe I'm having a dream. Uh, and I'm afraid it's a nightmare, really, a dream. The, the attacks upon the First Amendment. Um, you know, we're, not, we're not supposed to be able to say some things that we say. And, and, the, and the liberals are the ones that are talking so much about, you know, freedom of speech and all that. But, uh, but not a lot of you say something they disagree with. And uh, uh, this, of course, the attacks upon the Second Amendment. Uh, you can always tell a liberal, you can't tell them much, but you can always tell a liberal if, when they're, when they're attitude for the Second Amendment, of course. And uh, I thoroughly believe in the Second Amendment, and uh, not just because of hunting or all that. Guns. Yeah. And, you know, oh, yeah. 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 The, uh, the freedom to have guns and be armed. And, um, and it's whether you want to defend yourself or whether it's for hunting or if you just like guns, it's not the government's business, state or federal. Anybody else? We have some far ranging questions here. Anyway, but anyway, on and on and on, the problems with, with uh, the fact that, that our president would, would even presume <coughs> to uh, take over a, a car company and, or presume um, some of the things that, that he's going to do supersede Congress. He's not going to go to Congress. That's, that's astounding. That the man who's promised to who promised that he's supposed to be faithful to the Constitution is ripping it apart. And as I said, frankly, I don't give a flip whether it's a Democrat or Republican. I don't think much of the Republicans either. They, they should have been pitched in my opinion a long time ago. Other question? Yes. Yes, Dan. As far as, um, can you give me an update? I know that you had a, you have an update on your website, but it was, um, the article on it was several years old by Ken Hovind. Yes. And the situation was it was in FICA. And you, you mentioned on you in an article on your on your site 
that the need you asked if it was necessary for the employees to pay it themselves, or if he as an employer had to pay for it. And then also you mentioned that the money you withdrew was withdrawn from a personal account and putting it into the ministry account. You know, there's whatever, the nine thousand, ten thousand plus dollars. Uh, so what is he still He's still incarcerated, right? Another yes. couple more years? Yes. The question was how to do with Dr. Kent. Hold on. Kent is uh, one of the most uh, uh, brilliant debaters, knowledgeable about uh, evolution that I know. Dr. Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Gish is now dead. He was the number one debater for the evolutionist. But Kent has been had incredible uh, ministry, and he's become very outspoken. Now, let me tell you, Kent's a long-time friend of mine, and still a good friend of mine. Um, I, I, think he, uh, I think he fought the battle on the wrong hill, in my opinion. He was right. I think Kent Holbein has spent the last 10 or 11 years in the federal pen, and I think it should have been the judge and the IRS agent, and the prosecutor who should have been in jail, not Kent. And by the way, it's interesting. Maybe you don't know this, but the IRS agent who pushed this on Kent. Well, let me give you first. What happened was... Kent was a 501c8, anyway, not 501c3, uh, and many thousands of ministries have that. And Kent contacted the IRS three times about uh, taxes, about his employees. His employees paid their own fight. And, uh, and th is, is this all right? Three times. And this was brought up in court, by the way. And the IRS absolutely did not answer him, refused to answer him his letters over many months. And uh, he went to jail. Um, and he, he, he there's something about uh, in your bank account. If you if you uh, have $20,000 in cash, you're suspect. And uh, you can write a check for $20,000. You can deposit uh, various checks for $20,000. But if you deal with cash, uh, you're a suspect, maybe laundering, maybe a drug, uh, drug deal or whatever, and it's illegal. Currency. She so wants to clarify about what we mean. Cash. What do you mean that he gives cash out instead of a check? Yes, ma'am. If you have, if anytime you go to the bank and if you if you want to deposit twenty thousand dollars, they're going to fill out a little form on you instead of the IRS, and you're going to have to tell them where you got that cash. And see, I can understand it with all the drug money floating around. I understand it, but that's their problem. They should not be making innocent people criminals. My daddy taught me that, that people with character pay in cash. And back in my days, they would pay every day. In fact, in West Virginia, they paid the miners in silver dollars every day. And uh, But those days are gone forever, of course. The silver dollars also are gone. But, uh, uh, but if you go, if you deposit $20,000, then you have to fill up that, fill up that form. You're suspicious. Or if you take $20,000 out of your own account, no, no question about how I got there. Uh, it's your money. If you take out twenty thousand, you're also a suspect. What? Okay. Okay. My wife says ten. I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And uh, so anyway, Kent had to had to pay his people. He had a lot of people that worked for him in his ministry. And so they went down the bank and got cash and paid the people in cash. And so what they did, they, they knew about the ten thousand dollar rule. What they did is they staggered it, or they took out uh, eight thousand dollars. Where did they know it to fill form on eight thousand? And then a few days later, they take out five thousand. And so the IRS early saw this was happening, and so they called that. I don't know if it doesn't matter what they call it. Anyway, that's also wrong. And so that's what Kent was found guilty of also. And his wife spent a year in jail because she's the one that did the depositing and, and paying the people. And Kent spent uh, the last 10, 12, 10 or 11 years in jail. He's been in there that long now? Yes, ma'am. He has. For oh, a non. I think it's that long then. Yes. And he, uh, uh, you know, and I, in Tennessee, not far from where we live, a Church of Christ wife took a shotgun and blew her husband out of the bed, killed him. And she didn't go to prison. I'm saying she picked up a shotgun and purposely premeditated, killed her Church of Christ pastor, a husband, Maybe she's a and, and she did not go to bed, and didn't plead uh, uh, insanity. Now, so here's, she shoots her husband, blows his head off, and she doesn't spend any time, and my friend goes to prison, 
for 10, 11, 12 years. He's got 13 years sentence, I believe it was. And, for, and I think he's totally innocent. But it's, it's, what's interesting is that the IRS agent, that, and all of it was vicious, read the transcript, viciousness on the part of the judge, the IRS agent, and the, the uh, federal attorney. And the IRS agent, after Kent went to prison, was caught with child molestation and charged with child molestation, sent to prison, and was murdered in prison. Yeah. That's, a, that's a strange twist of the whole thing. Anyway, let's get to another question. I have one. No, I'm just trying to figure this out. Ed, you got one? Yeah, brief question. Yeah, you said that there's a, when you go to the bank and you want you want to withdraw ten thousand dollars, they um they could ask you, well, what are you gonna do with it? And you say it's none of your business. That's what I would say. Yes. That's what I said in 2002. I I withdrew seventy five hundred dollars, and the bank teller said to me. Why you take seventy five hundred dollars out of your bank account? It's why do you want to know what's to you? Mind your own business. And then he didn't say nothing. Why did he ask him questions? Did, did, does he want me to ask him what he does with his money? No. Well, see, that's it. Uh, and it's seventy five hundred dollars. Seventy five hundred. Supposed to be a thousand, but maybe because of this the structuring, they call it structuring. Yeah. Right. And they, they you were taking seventy five now, but uh, next week you take out uh, so four or five. And that's what I'm saying. So. Yeah, and they say, I know that there's the problem with laundering. That's the FBI's problem. Let them solve it the way they normally solve it. It was right. legal money. And that, I know that. But uh, anyway, uh, it's interesting. But that's the way it happens. That's what we are. Uh, Dr. Boyce, what do you think of the printing of $85,000 or a million dollars, a billion dollars a month, one trillion a year, <laughs> paper dollars? Is that theft of our money or not? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I believe you. Uh, <laughs> I believe you made it very clear where you stand on that. <laughs> You're not trying to hide it, are you? <laughs> uh, no, it's incredible that uh, uh, $85 billion is right, and uh, it's just making it higher. In your pocket now, less, worth less and less and less. It's worth less. And uh, I, you know, I'm not an economist. I, I write on the economy every now and then about how things are coming shut down. But, um, I know that I, I'm very simple. I know this: you can't spend more than you make. You can do it for a while, but you can't do it very long. And, and if you wind up in trouble, you're, it's a train wreck. And you can't do it as a family. You can't do it as a business. You can't do it as a nation. We're right now 17 trillion dollars in debt. Uh, really, it's more than that, but 17 trillion trillion dollars. We're not talking billions. We're talking about trillions. It can't. It'll never be paid. And I see. I see a massive, massive collapse coming. Some and people say it's January, June 30th and July 1st. You yeah. think it's right or wrong? Well, I, there's no way of knowing that. And I, and I have sometimes suggested dates, and, and that's you can always be off on the dates. It's too, it's usually too early. And uh, I don't know. I just know that uh, people should try to get out of debt. And uh, I've got to have some food put aside, some water put aside. And uh, you ought to plan for disaster because I think disaster is ahead of all of us. Question. Charles Creasman, give us your question, please. Give us a call, Charles. You called earlier. 856-261-9018. Yes. Do, do you believe Islam group is supported by Catholic group behind? Do I believe that Islam is Islam movement is mm. supported by a Catholic group? No, I don't have any proof in front of me. Do, do I believe that um, Islam is supported by the Catholic group? Uh, I don't have any proof of that. Some people think that's true. Uh, but I don't believe. I know this, that you can adjust for, to survive or to get what you want, as a, whether Catholics or whomever. You can, you can adjust what you believe. Now, Christians can't. I mean, we believe what we believe, and that's the way it's going to be. And if there are problems with it, then that's what it has to be. But uh, with cults, and I believe that Islam and Roman Catholicism is a cult, I believe there are decent people in both, but uh, I believe that they can adjust to what they believe. And there could be maybe a joy. Some people say that, that the Roman Catholics and the, and the uh, uh, two million uh, Muslims will join up at, in the final days, the last days. Could be. Uh, that's a stretch, I think. But uh, I remind of what happened, you know, 1300s with the 
for the Crusades, but uh, it could it could be. Have a question, yeah, Jill. Yeah, um, the other day we had seen it. Show, but showed and brought back to my memory, but John Paul II kissing Koran. And it showed Tony, well, Tony Blair, who used to be, I forgot what he used to be, then converted to Catholicism, and then he had this, what was that called? Something of faith? Face um, of faith. Face of faith, what was that? Um, but you know, I, just the one world religion or the religions merging together, like I think in the year 2000, they had that, I um, can't remember what it was called, but. All these uh, leaders, uh, yeah. all these yeah. religions coming together, Catholics and Muslims, among yes. other people, coming right. together. Yes, they were, and they were working with us, the little priests, and just everybody all amalgamated together. It was a farce, and, uh, and how can anybody with any character you know, participate in such a thing? But, but there were a number of Catholic priests there, and um, uh, Hindus, Buddhists, etc. We're, we're, in, we're living in strange, strange days. Albert, that's the, the the bumper sticker that's so prominent anymore that the coexistence uh, and Christianity is one of those signs that's blended in with that coexist, which causes confusion to fundamental Bible believing <laughs> Christians. But when you have churches that keep building and supporting a, a lot of the sin issues, a lot of political issues. Um, it causes great confusion. So that that narrowing of the yes. believers is getting more and more narrow as exactly. the day goes on. Yes, uh, and I think, uh, of course, the mainline denominations you know, they've been corrupt for many many years and getting worse as the, as the years go by. But the problem is it's infiltrating Bible preaching churches, the spirit of compromise, and um, many many people who call themselves evangelicals are guilty of this. So and some of the mega church pastors, some of the incredible stupid things, unbiblical things they put out support. Again, uh, to think that anybody who professes to believe the Bible and preach the Bible would support same sex marriage. And, and they said, but you know, they have a right to love and, and, and all that. And you've got to be a hater. It has nothing to do with hate. These people out there are using that. We don't hate anybody. It's a matter of loving the scripture, trying to. And then we don't want to be self-righteous about it, but and we have a right to it. This is what the Bible teaches. And uh, they they corrupt the Bible and they make Jonathan and David homosexual lovers and, and many, many others and to, to justify their own wickedness. Yeah. And so it makes us the, the more evangelicals and some of the mega church pastors, the more extreme they go and more get in bed with the liberals, it makes us, first of all, fewer and uh, look, look like nuts. And but hey. We shouldn't be surprised at that. And Paul talked about how we're going to be considered the off-scouring of the earth, the scum of the earth. We don't want to be like that. You know, we have a little education, a little culture, and we we don't want to be known as the scum of the earth. And so many Christians just capitulate. And say, well, I believe it, but I'm not going to talk about it because they know at work that be could be a problem in the neighborhood, in the family, there could be some problem. And so many Christians are quiet. People. I've known for years that they, they just sit there silent. Pastors even silent. Tragic. You know, that, that, that's, what I, that's what I see in my workplace. And again, with the, you know, the, the, the coexistent type movements, yes. is it, it's always the, what they're always pushing toward is we got to focus on what we do agree on, not what we don't. And it's not what we agree to agree. It's what His Word has taught us, and that we're supposed to be going for. Right? Yes. And then that's where the you know, I, there's so many people will. To almost feel uncom or uncomfortable speaking the truth. Well, yes, people are. They do feel uncomfortable. And see, when I when I do the talks, they try to make me feel nut. I mean, they uh, I'm ridicule. And I've had psychologists, psychiatrists stand up and scream at me on the Sally Show. I mean, stand up and scream. And uh, what they I, say? Well, the one that I'm thinking of, uh, there are two psychologists, lesbians. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> and they have a little boy there with them too. Yeah, they adopted. And they're young like so, you. So I said, I said, uh, I, how, I said, how can I compete today? I mean, here, this beautiful baby and, and all, but I said, it's still wrong. Lesbianism, right, homosexuality, it's still wrong. And uh, then there are other, not only those two lesbians, there are two uh, men, uh, well, males, and they were good looking guys and big. They were bodybuilders. In fact, I've seen them on other shows when I used to watch TV a lot. They, uh, I mean, they were big, built. And, and they were 
the same body of elders. And so they were the two men. And so it's two homosexual men, two homosexual women, and this little baby, and then myself. That's the way the talk shows usually do. They have me and five or six other people. And I don't mind that because I can handle them. But the problem is I don't get to, I don't get to eat them without time. I just right, yeah. just got to up my uh, So anyway, the, uh, the, the women were screaming at me, and then the homosexual men got up, got on it. And uh, they started screaming and called me a hater, hater. And I said, hope. And Sally was always kind of cheap. I, was, I did her show three times. She was real nice to me. So I, I don't have any complaint with her. And she, in fact, she said, Dr. Don, what do you think? And uh, I said, I want to point out to everybody that I'm the one that's trying to sit down and talk and discuss this thing and talk about the biblical perspectives and talk about the scientific studies that have been done. And these are the ones that are screaming and yelling. And the crowd, crowd applauded me. Wow. It's the first time I've ever done a talk show. I mean, I've had, but I mean, not homosexual. I always lose on homosexual sex. And the crowd always against me. But this is one time they applauded me. And I, it made a big impression on me. But it was so obvious. I was the one trying to be reasonable, and they're the screaming and yelling. So that's one good time that I had a good response. Dr. Boyce, what's your analysis? Past, present, and future of Obamacare? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get my age, you're really concerned. I think everybody ought to be concerned. Again, the math simply doesn't work. And uh, plus, it's incredible that the government would try to tell us that you have to do this. Uh, again, going back to the Constitution, it, it's, a, it's amazing how far we've strayed. It's not just straying, it's a matter of running away from the Constitution. Yeah. And, um, and the, it's, it's a, as even secular writers would say, it's a massive train wreck that's going to happen. And uh, I think it's going to fall its own weight. I, 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 whether the public is able to think about it or not, no matter who gets elected, they may try, and hopefully they'll do something about it. But if it continues, I think it would be so monumental, such a, such a disaster, that it will be a cold. And uh, that might be, that'd be a good thing, of course, in my opinion. But when you get up, you know, it's a matter of quality of life. And, uh, for instance, I really ought to have a set of lungs. I, I have a lung problem, and, uh, but they won't even consider me for a lung transplant because of my age. Now, if I were 50 or 55 or so, they would consider it. And, Medi and the Medicare... Uh, Insurance would take care of it. But they wouldn't consider it. My lung specialist told me, you know, there's no, there's no chance. So when you're older, it's they think, well, how long does he have? To, how long is possibility is he going to have to live? For the actuaries, do they live two years or 20 years? And is it worth the money to put into that heart transplant or whatever? So uh, we got problems. No problem. But if you had the money, they would do the operation. If you took the money out of your pocket and paid doctors, they would do it. Well, number one, number one, I couldn't even come close to it. Well, it, but even if I had it, I'm not sure that I, they had, they, you, you go into a line, uh, you're, you're a, in a, a, oh, yeah. a group of people who next in line, sure. and uh, I don't know that it would uh, be a possibility. But they put me in the line in order, in other words, even if I had the money, because other people younger, and I understand that, younger people need it, and so they would have I work in healthcare and uh, I don't have exact uh, confidence of what I'm speaking, so I'll kind of speak in a little bit around what I do now. But um, I'll use myself as an example. I was in the hospital in the last year and um, part of the care I have was for an infection. Now, they ran batteries of tests on me, which is commendable for the, the alertness to the care. But at the same time, while they're struggling with all the issues going on with Obamacare and, and other Medicare problems, Medicaid problems um, for reimbursements, the medical professionals are encouraged to run that next test, that run that next test, not necessarily to help you, but to generate funds for reimbursement that they're not getting from other areas. So there's a lot of, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, as far as the way money is uh, addressed and what's been going on, and there's like an intensity of that, because it's not just me, I mean, I see it in people I do in my job as far as being a patient, now, now God's grace, I've got good insurance and, and whatnot, right. uh, but at the same time, they'll still run those batteries on a lot of patients who don't have the insurance, yes. just to get as much as they can get I back. I've heard that, yes, I've heard that, and um, 
and I happen to know some doctors that uh, are, they're not, they're not, right, this, this is a major problem. Doctors simply are selling out and they're going into Shackley or Emway or retiring or whatever. And uh, uh, we'll have major problems in that area. There, there are certain fields where the, the nurses actually make more than some of the doctors based on what they get reimbursed with. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there, there's it's, it is complex as they make it have to be, yeah. but some of it, again, when you're generating procedures uh, tested, you might not necessarily need. I mean, it was great for my scenario, but other people, just because they were there and they said it. At the same time I'm saying all this, they also had me written up as having had a hip replacement. Never had my hip replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so it was some of, that, some of that treatment based on what somebody well, had certainly put in there yeah. and ran away. So Dan, you have something from the internet? Yeah, from Charles Christie. Uh, oh, yes. It says, the question... Oh, wait, is someone? Hello? Yes, Okay, here's the question. Then you get your uh, David Council's question. Go ahead, Dave. centuries. I had infiltrated in, in uh, churches in fact they were, they were even uh, forbidden in some countries for a couple hundred years. But no, I don't, I don't have proof of that. Dan, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, this is uh, Charles Priestman from Downstate, Illinois. The first question was already answered in a previous discussion. The second question is uh, I would ask Dr. Boyce if he's familiar with Scott Lively and his work and his book The Pink Swastika. Yes. Just if I'm aware of it's all, yes. And uh, from what I can remember, it's a good book. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, Eddie? I need your opinion on something. In the state of New Jersey, about half the counties right now are doing this, talking about money. Now, if a person goes to jail and their bail is $10,000, whatever, $5,000, $10,000, and somebody wants to bail them out, that person has to prove that money is legal before they let that person out of jail. What's your opinion on that? First of all, I've never heard of it. But that's well, true. yeah, it's true. I was there. I was there. I was there. But you know, people you know, go to jail and they bail is whatever, but the people bail them out. If they can't prove that money's legal, they won't let that person out of jail. What's your opinion well, on that? First of all, it shouldn't be that they have to prove it's legal. But well, yes, they do. But the government should have to prove it's illegal. Then it's different. No, I think it's the same. Okay, good. We saw the white. Okay, but I was right ahead. Hello, Dr. Boyd. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Barbara Crowder from New Jersey. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on the Supreme Court case that was just decided Thank you, Barbara. 
appreciate that. Well, it's, it's right at the heart of one of the major problems, I think, in our churches. Uh, now, again, when you talk about separation, you talk about separation from the world and also maybe separation from uh, ecclesiastical separation. Um, personal separation, ecclesiastical separation. Both are important. And um, uh, personal separa separation, remember, you have to be careful. You can't, if the Bible isn't clear, it's specific, you can't, you can't demand separation of a part of people. For instance, give me an example. Um, mixed faith. See, you see, some people in some parts of the country, you don't even, Christians would not think of going swimming together. And other parts of the country, no big deal, have done it for hundreds of years. Uh, something like that, you know, I can't be definitive and dogmatic about. And I have to, you know, I may also disagree about that. No big deal. And, and say, slacks on women. And that's another big, used to be a big deal in our church. It is not that big thing now. But uh, uh, women wearing slacks. Uh, I, I don't, and, and, and let me tell you something. Also, the problem is sometimes people who have, take what I call the hard-nosed position on that and other issues, get a little self-righteous about it. Frankly, I think self-righteousness is the worst sin than women wearing slacks, if in fact it's wrong. Uh, and uh, so we need to be a little... Let me give you a very quick illustration. Some leaders from from, from uh, Dutch leaders came to America, I don't remember, maybe 20, 25 years ago, and their commission was to t look at the condition of the American churches. And they visited various churches, large and small, and different denominations across America. A lengthy, extensive study. They went back home, and they had a big convocation, huge crowd of people there, and these People that, you know, I don't know, five men or so, that made the trip were sitting on the platform at a long table, and they were giving their oral report and answering questions, but also it was a physical written report that was given. And they sat there and told about what they had seen in American churches. And they were appalled, number one, that we drove large cars, number two, that we more expensive jewelry, three, that we went out to eat after lunch. You're guilty. <laughs> went out to eat after lunch on Sunday. <laughs> and four, five, there were about five or six things like that. And they literally were appalled. And they literally wept. These five church leaders wept about us wearing expensive clothes and jewelry and driving large cars and going out to eat on Sunday. They literally wept in their beer and on the cigarettes. <laughs> See, that's an example of separation. We would not even think of smoking and drinking, and yet they were appalled that we wear a watch. And you got to have a watch. And, you know, uh, but it rings and clothes. I'm simply saying we need to be a little more generous in our idea about separation. And I see the hypocrisy of some pastors who, well, I've seen pastors who, who preach that it's terribly wrong for a woman to wear slacks. But... His wife dresses like a floozy. They still use that term, yeah. a floozy? Yeah. 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 She wouldn't think of wearing slacks, and he wouldn't permit her. But he permits her to... Whatever. Wait, I mean... What about separating from apostasy? Apostasy. The Bible's very clear. Paul the Apostle said in St. Corinthians, Come out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord. I did that as a 16-year-old teenager pulled out of the American Baptist Church, a good American Baptist Church, one of the hardest decisions I ever made in my life. And uh, and then I was an uh, evangelist for Youth for Christ after college. And I was happy in that. Did a good job, uh, I mean, an acceptable job, and, and uh, making enough money to pay my family. But Youth for Christ came out with an ad in 19 and 50, 19 and I don't remember the year, um, the year that RSV came out, 59 or so. Anyway, they had a big ad in the October issue of Youth for Christ magazine voting the, the RSV version of the Bible. And I immediately sent a telegram to Wheaton, Illinois, to the president of Youth for Christ and resigned as staff of anchors. I lost my income, lost, you know, the meetings, some of the meetings, not all of them, some of the meetings I had booked associated with YFC. I lost all that. Now, I, I don't mean to pat myself on the back. I'm simply saying that uh, I want nothing to do with that. Amen. And we are to be separatists without being <coughs> unreasonable. And again, self-righteous. We, we sure don't want to 
be self-righteous. We can tell the truth and let people decide for themselves. But we need to be personally separated and ecclesiastically separated. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Albert and then Tom. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of uh, our government in that uh, tangentially with Pastor Wade having uh, served our country uh, as a pastor and having his hands tied with what he could preach at that given time to where it's just overt now where our government comes right out and tells the clergy that they can't proselytize amongst the ranks. They can't go out and witness to fellow soldiers and yeah. bring them into Christ. Chaplains, chaplains, yeah. Oh, yes. Incredible. That's incredible. That, but, yeah. they'll defend, I'm sorry, I'm it, but they'll defend what Islam can do yes. and speak, and they'll defend homosexuality and what they can do. Yes. The same government. Oh, yes. By our Excellent. hands here and open the door right there. Excellent point. It, it, his statement was about the government restricting chaplains and being able to teach Christ and, and, and win people to Christ and witness to them. They have to be very general as they deal with the, with the soldiers. But yet, uh, Islam and others can make outrageous statements. And uh, it's just an incredible inc I believe inconsistency is dishonesty. I felt that all my life. And that we have to be consistent in what we believe, what we teach, what we practice. And that's terribly inconsistent. I may have another question in that is that can the chaplains who want that, and I'm not saying they haven't taken a stand, but can they somehow form a stronger stand to be able to do what they're called to do? Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I appreciate you pushing that. Uh, the fact is, I believe that those chaplains should break the law. Yeah. I'm telling you, if I were a chaplain, and they said, no, you can't support whatever, um, I would say, watch me. <laughs> Sunday morning. And, and if... if uh, 100 chaplains, 500 chaplains did that, they're not going to put them all in prison. And it, 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 even if they did, they could sure put a spotlight on the issue. Yes. And I'm, I'm also sure that there's a good handful that continue. I'm like, sure that, yes. you're under the big brother yeah. watching what you can yeah. say. And you don't think, you know, it's, uh, if, they, if they refuse to obey, it, it could be maybe court martial or at least lose their, yes. their pensions and all. So that's, it's like back in in the uh, 30s, 40s, where these pastors pulled out for the Presbyterian and the, and the Baptist, and sometimes to a certain extent, the Methodist church, mainline churches. And they lost everything. Many of them lost everything. Some of them lost their buildings and pensions and friends and lost everything. But they were willing to pay the price. I think chapters will do the same. Well, you have some yes, I want, to know, uh, I want to know how you got into this uh, um, uh, talking about things you're talking about, you know, the political things and separation and okay. all that, from, from just being a preacher. Okay, good question. Mm -hmm. And I've had that question before. Um, well, the main thing, I, I've always been a little controversial, but when I when I got involved in politics, I was elected the House of Representatives in Indiana. What year was that? In the, in the, in the, in the 70s, late 70s. I... <coughs> I was I was a school administrator. I, I started the Indianapolis Baptist Academy, and uh, was running it. We were getting on with one of the largest churches, one of the largest schools in America. And uh, under we started. What under what church? The church was Philip Baptist Church, south side of Indianapolis, and the school the school was Baptist Academy. And the state started giving us problems, uh, problems, Mickey Mouse things. They would come in and say uh, that that exit sign is supposed to be green, not red. Yeah, we nitpick. Yeah. And, uh, and I had, uh, and I had, so we changed, that's just one example that came to my mind. And a couple of months later, the state yeah. man came in, <laughs> and he said, that has to be red. I said, your, your friend told me just a couple months ago that it had to be green, whatever. And so we were having trouble like that, and they want, wanted to control our schools. And my position was, the state of Indiana can't even control the public schools. Yeah. And the kids aren't learning to read. I said, our kids are reading in kindergarten, yeah. and, and we don't have major drug problems. I said, they're trying to tell us. That's plus a lot they had no authority to tell us. Uh, and so, anyway, uh, Dr. Greg Dixon, a good friend of mine, pastor of a large church in Indianapolis, challenged me to run for the house. I never thought of such a thing. He said, but now he said, we need somebody in there who doesn't have to be educated, somebody that has to be told, somebody have to, we have to prop up and, and prompt, and somebody that's, that's there because quite often the, the, it's almost law before they know about it so they can oppose it. But if somebody is there, we can kill it. Well, I found when I got elected, I was able to kill many, many things in committee. Never even got out. And my friends didn't even know about it. Yeah. And uh, But that's what, when I got elected, 
I, I told her at the very beginning, when I, my first speech, I said, look, I'm a Republican, but I'm a conservative Republican and a Christian school administrator. And I said, I will vote for the Republicans when they're right, and I'll vote against them when they're wrong. Amen. And I'll vote for the Democrats when they're right. And so I, my, even Republicans didn't like it. <laughs> and I had to fight the machine. The machine, of course, wanted to go with the other guy because he'd been elected, been in office for eight years, and they wanted him. And he's a nice guy, but he could be controlled. The politicians, whether Democrat or Republican, don't like anybody they can't control. And if you're independent minded and you think for yourself and you're willing to go against, they don't. That's, in fact, they, they would rather have, a Democrat would rather have a Democrat lose than have somebody. The independent wins, and then hopefully next time they can get somebody they can control. Same way with the Republicans. Yes. And that's why you've seen a number of examples in the last few years of Republican, the establishment Republicans not supporting good conservatives uh, and supporting more nominal Republicans. And sometimes they lost. They Ted Cruz, they lost. They, and, and he won, he beat the, the, the party. And the party doesn't want somebody who's independent. Mind. I had the same problem. Anna, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, we got a message from uh, Philadelphia, from Jonathan Novak. Okay. Uh, just completed a telephone call with a brother. Just heard about the discussion about heart transplant. I think it was a lung transplant with the discussion. Question. I heard about stem cell injections from bone marrow, which appears to have consistent dramatic benefits. What I've heard is being used consistently in Europe, and it's only started to be investigated in the USA. This procedure has a very positive result for the last 10 years. A lot, uh, but not hit the mainstream, not be publicized. He's got a question. A question: Which of the books of your ministry has the most impact for the Lord, and why do you think it was so successful? Which you all guys love, Dr. Novak. Um, which of my books be, had the greatest impact? And there's no way I can say. You know, it's, it's so very. The evolution book has has been used by many people, homeschoolers, and others. Um, Islam, of course, is right up to date. Um, I can't say. I really don't know. First of all, there's no measurement. But even in my, to make a uh, reasonable judgment, I couldn't come to the conclusion. I don't know. That's all for this question. Another one, Dan? Which question have you heard about it? Have you heard about that the injection? Of yes, I'm sorry. I've heard about it. The, the stem cell injection, and that's that's controversial also, but I understand that now it's not, it shouldn't be controversial, but it wouldn't help me because my lungs are scarred. And, uh, I, but, I, but they're not being, they're not continuing. They're, they're in the mission. They're not supposed to be in the mission. But I'm, I, I feel like I'm 50, 45 or 50 again, except, of, except when I go up, instead of 80. Uh, <laughs> but I, except when I go upstairs. When I go up and downstairs, especially if I carry something, uh, i got to sit down. Devon, you something? Yes, he didn't get to finish. finish. About what? About how I got into this. Oh, yeah, oh what? All right. Yeah, thank you. Keep me on track. Interesting. Uh, well, well, that, it's a long answer. It's a long time. Well, because I, I got elected, and uh, and uh, so I was involved. All my legislation was, every piece of legislation I had, except one, was extremely controversial. I had a bill about homosexuality, and of course, they had massive committee meetings, and they kind of came out of the woodwork against me. Media. I had a bill requiring the public schools to teach creation and evolution on an equal basis. I had 32,000 signatures. The governor stopped me one day. He said, Representative Boys, please don't have your people write me anymore. <laughs> he said, I've got, I've got thousands of letters. I've got to write, answer every letter. He said, I'm going to sign the bill. If it passes, I'll sign it. And so, uh, but it was all controversial. I would been in jail for a lifetime with no possibility of parole if they raped somebody. And no, even the governor, the president, nobody can control. It. And what the, the liberals really came out against that. They said, why do you want to put a man in jail for a lifetime for rape? I said, because they can't get the death penalty. And if I get the death penalty, they'd rather have that. And they used to. In your day and mine, they used to they used to execute uh, rapists. And so anyway, I, I was very involved in all these hot issues. And, 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 and so I, and I was asked almost every day, Representative Boys, why? Are you against this? And why are you for this? And why this bill? So I, just, I started writing white papers, and that, that was my first book. So I'm saying that uh, I was so involved in everything, and it involved our school, and we, we had to fight the state uh, on different things. And you know, the state thinks they can credit the schools. I think accreditation is a farce and a fraud and a fake. 
So I guess my life was colored by that time in the House. And then I wrote my books and started writing for USA Today. And that was very controversial also because my column was the conservative position on gun control and all these other issues. That's where I think I must have seen your face in USA Today. Yes, yes. You look familiar to me. I expected you to look like something else. You look like you. Well, yeah, I was very thrilled. And I quit. They didn't fire me. I wrote for eight years. I quit USA Today because they, first of all, they had a full page, 95% nude, a man nude. Nude? Yes, 95%. And advertising something, I don't remember what it was. And they told me when they hired me, they signed the contract, let us know when you see something controversial happen. See, it was called the page, it was the opinion, what they called the opinion page. And they had five different columns. Mine was, of course, their their position on gun control or abortion, whatever. And then somebody else's, and different degrees. Mine, I told them, I told the editor, I said, I think you all consider me your token fundamentalist. And and so I took that, and he said, now let us know when you hear something controversial, and we'll because they wanted to stay current, what was happening in what part of the country or whatever. And so I did that, and I I came back from Israel, and I had to go over to Israel and stop off in London <coughs> for a couple of days, and I found out that, uh, that Martin Luther King uh, had plagiarized his PhD dissertation. Also, in, I, I have a dream speech, and, uh, and it was getting big news in England. I came back to America. I said, I want to do a column just simply tell the truth about Martin Luther King. And we all knew about his immorality. I mean, he had many mistresses everywhere. We knew that about that. But um, uh, they wouldn't let me do it. And for every year, I would write a column about Jan- his birthday is January 15th. Mine's also January 15th. And so I take the day off, but it's not on me, not him. <laughs> but uh, uh, I-, I would send a column in every year, about sometime after the first of the year, to be ready for January 15th. They never, re- they always refused it, and uh, and I have a co- I have a full page, uh, a full page of uh, that of that issue of USA Today, and it has it's called the King Debate, and it was either thing else. The next day it might be the gun to get gun debate or abortion debate or whatever. This was King Debate. Not one negative word was said on that whole page, and they refused my column. They didn't refuse any other column, but they refused one on King. Every every year they refused it. Hey, got I got mad and quit. My preacher friend said I was wrong. Many of them said, no, you, you've got six million people you can write. And, and I, I said, true. And I, I, told, I wrote him. I said, don't send me any more for my contract. In March, I had my contract to do. I said, I'm not interested. I won't sign it. Well, Anna's got something so quickly. Anna's got to The naked man, what about him? They did. <laughs> well, it's, it just they were advertising. I don't remember. Oh. Uh, just, they, that had nothing to do with your quitting. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, the fact that I just was... So we're so disgusted with it, and uh, and I, of course I had nothing to do with the advertising, but a, a paper that would would do something like that just for, yeah. for advertising or whatever. So we started Common Sense for Today and your blog. And yeah, uh, and after, after after that, <coughs> things started opening up, you know, to do other things and my blog and, and the internet. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was wondering what your opinion of the intelligence community was. It's not very intelligent. <laughs> my opinion, of, my, what, my opinion of the intelligence community. Um, you have to have intelligence, of course. Any nation does. Um, Israel had to have, you know, some intelligence. And spies, and spies to spy the land. Um, but again, none of this trumps the Constitution, or the first, fifth amendment, whatever, and first, fourth, and fifth. They don't have. Uh, I'm, I'm all for anti-terrorism and all that, but uh, not if it means the loss of our freedoms, because millions of men have given their lives after the years, uh, hundreds of thousands of men have given their lives, and uh, uh, it's, 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 it's simply not right. And I, I sympathize with all the new technology and the problems with Islam and all that, but uh, I, I have, I have, I'm ambivalent about Snowden and what he did. I, one day I think he's a, a dirty traitor. Next day I think maybe he's an admirable whistleblower. So I, I haven't, I haven't firmed my, my mind on Snowden. 
But uh, I know this. The government doesn't have a right. And I'm not, I don't care about people listening to my phone calls. I, and, and my wife is concerned about privacy. I don't care about anybody that listens to what I say on the phone or on my computer. I don't care at all. Uh, I, by principle, or principle, I do. But I'm not concerned. Um, but uh, the government is, I think, way overstepping its bound and using a false reason for their uh, breaking of, of the person, First Amendment discussion. Let me ask one final question. I can't ask a question. Uh, do you feel that there are grounds that the president has performed that are could lead and should lead perhaps for impeachment? Not will, but yeah. should be. I think so. I think, it, it, frankly, there are many not just one, two, or three. I think there are many, many uh, abuses that he's... And, and folks, I honestly, I feel the same way. I don't care what behind his name was, Republican or Democrat. Uh, I don't like totalitarians. And, and he and many in Congress, both parties, are totalitarians. And uh, if, 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 they, if the members of Congress had any expect in the House, they would, uh, they, would, they, would, they would impeach you and the Senate could you know, decide what they're going to yeah. do, but at least it'd be the, uh, <coughs> the disgrace of being impeached in the House that they to today. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate that. Boys, I wonder, Mrs. Wake, could you come